So we're going to talk a little bit about what it means for a variable to be a mediator. So the first thing to point out is that the idea of mediation or mediators are very similar to confounding. The only real difference is the nature of the association between x1 and x2. <coughs> okay. When building an effect size model, we're usually going to want to exclude mediators from the model. Although, um, we'll talk about it in this video. And you can read a little bit more about the idea of mediation analysis if you're interested. Okay, so it's a whole large topic on its own. We're going to talk about mediators and for the most part we're going to exclude them when building uh, models to estimate the effect of some variable x1 on an outcome. But you can read a bit more about the topic of mediation analysis to learn a bit more about the direct effect, the indirect effect, and the total effect of a variable on some outcome. So essentially what mediation is, is when some of the effect of the variable of interest, x1, goes through the x2 variable. Okay. So if you remember, just to kind of parallel it, confounding looked like this. X2 has some influence on X1. X1, what effect does it have on the outcome? That's our question of interest. And X2 also directly affects the outcome. So X2 and X1 were associated, but it was either X2 causing changes in X1, or at least X2 not sitting on the pathway between X1 and the outcome. Here, we're looking at X2, the mediator, right, sitting in the middle. X2 is sitting between X1 and the outcome. In every other way, we're gonna, um, uh, mediators are going to behave numerically the same as confounders in models. So the real way to identify a mediator is through our conceptual understanding of the association between X1 and X2. So first, let me just write down the criteria for mediators, and then we'll get to thinking about some conceptual examples that fit this diagram. So as I said, the criteria is essentially the same as confounding, except for the nature of the association between X1 and X2. So the first, and the most important, is that it makes sense conceptually. Okay. So that this diagram makes sense based on our understanding of the relationship between these variables. What we're going to want to see is that x2 has some effect on the outcome. That x1 directly affects x2. And so there's an association between x1 and x2 with x2 on the pathway. between x1 and y. So again, not just that they're associated like they are in confounding, but x1 directly affects x2. So changes in x1 cause changes in x2. And numerically, just kind of blindly numerically looking at what we're going to see, again, is the same as what we saw with confounding. When we adjust, or include x2 in the model, b1 changes okay, a lot, lot being a subjective word, and the standard error for b1 does not increase a lot. Okay. It increases a little bit, stays the same, or it decreases a bit. Okay. So what I want to point out is that um, numerically, a mediator and a confounder are going to behave identically. The main difference is the association between x1 and x2 and our understanding of that. So I just want to give you a few examples of um, mediators and concepts. In the data set we're working with, the um, FEV data, there's no good examples, there's no mediators in that data set. So I'm going to make up a few others. Um, 
One is going to be a data set you're working with on the first assignment, and one is going to be just a conceptual example. Um, so this one came from a, comes from a paper I was looking at recently, and they were looking at the effect of arthritis. of the knee and hip. So what effect does having arthritis in your knee or your hip have on depression? So that was the goal of the, the study, to look at does having um, osteoarthritis in the knee or in hip affect depression levels at all. And one of the variables included in the, the model to try and do this was looking at exercise. So the model adjusted for exercise or included that in there. And let's think about the nature of the association between these variables. Um, first, is exercise going to affect depression? Yeah, it should, right? Exercising more tends to lead to lower levels of depression, or inactivity can increase um, risk of depression. What about having um, arthritis in the knee or the hip? Is that going to be associated with exercising or not? Quite likely, right, they should. If um, lots of movement in your knee or hip um, causes pain, you're much less likely to exercise, right? You're going to have lower levels of activity on average if you have arthritis in the knee or the hip. So these are going to be associated, and having the arthritis in the knee or the hip is going to have a direct impact on exercise. Right? So they're associated, and having arthritis in the knee or hip leads to decreased exercise. Decreased exercise leads to increased risk of depression. And this may also have its own um, direct effect on depression as well. Right, so having, well that was the question of interest, right? Does having arthritis in the near hip um, affect levels of depression? So we can see with mediation, what's gonna happen is including this um, mediator in the model, some of the effect that um, having, or our variable of interest, x1, right? Some of the effect it has on the outcome gets taken away by this mediator. Okay, so the, the mediator being included in the model tends to lessen the effect that your variable interest has on the outcome. Okay, in some sense, it's stealing some of the effect away. So, like I said, mediation analysis is a whole kind of topic on its own. You can read a little bit more about it. The kind of uh, quick keywords to say, this here, this pathway, gives us the direct effect of x1 on y. This here gives us the indirect effect, right, the effect of x1 one on Y that's going through the mediator. Right? Some of that effect, and when the mediator is included in the model, this part gets absorbed into the coefficient for the mediator. Right? So some of the effect of X1 gets taken away or, or put into there. And these two combined make up the total effect, right? the direct and the indirect effect. So that's something you can read a bit more about on your own if you want. You're not going to be assessed on anything in terms of mediation analysis for the course. So just a side note of something that you might want to look at on your own. One more example I want to mention before um, closing off this topic is one that uh, you're working on on the uh, assignment one for the course. So there you have a small set of data that looks at salaries within, I forget if it's universities or community colleges, it's some data from the US and. Uh, a little bit of data I think is from the 80s, I believe. But the question of interest is looking at salary discrimination. It's looking at the effect of biological sex on salary. Yeah. Now in the assignment, there's a note to just um, that there was a court case that decided one of these variables needed to be removed from the analysis. Um, and what that was, was the academic rank. And so what they found was that there was um, salary discrimination. Females were being paid lower on average than males for doing the same work. But part of the way that, that discrimination was getting hidden was that females 
were less likely to get promoted to the higher ranks. Okay, so part of the discrimination was going on through um, promotion. So the biological sex had a direct effect on whether or not they got promoted to higher ranks. Rank has an effect on salary. Being at a higher rank leads to a higher salary. And the question of interest was, what effect does sex have on salary, right? What is the salary discrimination that's going on? And so in the court case, they said that this variable needs to be removed from the analysis because that's part of the way that the discrimination is happening. And without using that term, essentially what they're saying is this is acting as a mediator, right? Some of the sex discrimination is growing through this rank variable, and that's why it was excluded from the model. So these are a couple, hopefully they're um, making sense to you. If not, you can uh, do a search, read a bit more about examples of mediators. As I said, this data set we're working on in, in linear regression doesn't have any good examples of mediators. Once we get to logistic regression, we'll have a few good examples of uh, variables that are mediating the relationship between our variable of interest and the outcome, and we'll look at those there. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.